Go, 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 go. Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today, the murder of Officer Jonah Hernandez, Las Cruces Police Department, New Mexico. Folks, on our members only page, I had done an Officer Down update on Officer Hernandez. in the neck oh my god is he okay is the officer okay no he's bleeding really bad he was stabbed in the neck where's the guy at the guy the, the guy that stabbed him is down my boyfriend shot him three times in the we're gonna be in the great state of New Mexico and officer Hernandez was 35 years old he had two years law enforcement experience with Las Cruces. Now he had a wife and he had two sons. Now our suspect, he was homeless. He was a mental consumer. And he also had a fairly long criminal history. Now those three seem to go hand in hand a lot of cases. A lot of homeless people are mental consumers and they also commit crime. It's February 11th, 2024. It's about 4.30 or so on a Sunday evening. Now also Hernandez gets dispatched to a trespassing call at a business in the 300 block of South Valley Drive. The city of Las Cruces, their, their policy evidently allows one officer to go on calls where a suspect is present. Every department's different. Memphis Police Department dispatcher is not allowed to send just one officer on any call where there's a suspect on the scene or even if the suspect's in the area, they have to send two cars. And even if one car advises the dispatcher to disregard the other and I'll handle it, dispatcher can't okay that. And in fact, the lieutenant should get on the radio and reinforce the policy by telling the dispatcher to send both cars. Now, Officer Hernandez, he makes the scene. I don't know if he knew this suspect or not. From watching the body cam footage, he didn't address him by any particular name. Even though he sounded cordial speaking to the suspect, it didn't sound like he actually knew him. But in any event, Officer Hernandez, he parks there at the closed gate and he steps over and walks back to where the suspect's at. Now, originally the suspect was over on the south side of the business. Now, he evidently saw... Officer Hernandez at the red light. And I take it from what the suspect did that he figured the officer was coming to check on him. So he walks around the front of the business, goes over to the north side of the business, and there's a covered carport. And the suspect's got his personal belongings there. So now by the time Officer Hernandez had gotten out of his patrol vehicle, the suspect was sitting cross-legged underneath that carport. Now, it looks like about the time Officer Hernandez steps over that short little entrance gate, the suspect jumps up and he folds his arms. Now, something that I saw of interest was the CCTV footage. Well, the way the suspect's walking, if you you watch his left arm, he doesn't swing it as much as he does his right arm, which is, as we will find out, the reason he's not swinging that left arm a lot is because he's got a butcher knife up his sleeve. 
and also looked like he was kept cupping his left hand some and that's I take it to be an effort to keep the knife up the sleeve of his shirt now Officer Hernandez gets within I don't know maybe 8 or 10 feet in fact he's barely stopped before the suspect you see his right hand go to his sleeve he pulls the knife out and he attacks the officer well now the only the hope officer Hernandez has got he's going to have to get distance because he's too close now well then he trips and he falls and the suspect's on him the suspect stabs him multiple times now he's going for the face and the neck region and it is a horrid video to watch. Now, I've got it included in the resource material, so if you need to, need to or want to see all of that, it's there to be seen. Now, a civilian, in fact, it was a civilian that actually had called the police, had stopped and was watching what was going on. Now, this witness, he gets out of his car, and he gets his pistol he's got, and he runs over there to the parking lot. Now the suspect turns and advances on this witness, and the witness, he does the right thing. He defends himself. He shoots and kills the suspect. And then him and another witness attempt to render aid to Officer Hernandez, but Officer Hernandez is just bleeding out. Now, the police, they respond to the witness. The witness got on Officer Hernandez's handy talkie and hollered for help. So they get there. Now, they transport Officer Hernandez to the hospital, but he's just too far gone. And he dies. They start their investigation. When they get done, they recommend to the Attorney General's office not to prosecute the witness who shot and killed the suspect. The Attorney General's office agreed. They said after reviewing the facts of the case, they would decline to pursue charges against the witness. Now the Chief, I was pretty impressed by him. I, I don't know him, but just listen to some of the press conferences he Seems to be a pretty squared away chief. But now he he mentioned that it was common for officers to respond to trespassing calls alone. He talked about how many of those calls that they get. And he said he wished he could have two officers on at every single call. Well, actually he can if that's what they decide to do. You could certainly change your policy. Officer Jonah Hernandez, end of watch, February 11th, 2024.